wave all presentations. If everyone could please be seated. <coughs> We're going to start the Sacramento Transportation Authority and the Sacramento Abandoned Vehicle Service Authority for October 10th, 2019. Madam Clerk, yes, please read the statement. This meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast, consolidated communications in the AT and TU verse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocabletv. Today's meeting will replace Sunday, October 13th at 2 p.m. and again on Wednesday, October 16th at 9 a.m. on channel 14. Members of the audience wishing to address the board may sign up using a speaker card located at the back of the room and bring it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone addressing the board and state your name for the record. Okay, could you take the roll, please? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Directors Carr. He's here. Carr. Frost. Gatewood. Here. Gira. Here. Hansen. Harris. Here. Howell. Here. Hume. Kennedy. Lozano. Miller? Present. Natoli? Chenier? Here. Serna? And Suen? Here. And Peters? Representing the county. Thank you. You have a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would everyone rise and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> you want to call your first item? Your first item is comments from the public regarding matters not on the agenda. And you do have one speaker card I placed in front of you. But that was on number six. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. That's correct. Okay. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak on an item that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll go to the executive director's report. Good afternoon. Um, since our September meeting, we have uh, finally received uh, total revenue figures from the California Department of Fee and Tax Administration. And these figures are split out between the, uh, among the last two fiscal years, rather than being aggregated as, as they were before. And so for fiscal year 2017-18, out of $122 million, we came within $57,000 $57, oh, yeah. of hitting um, our target right on the nose. Oh, wow. Uh, for fiscal year 2018-19, we fared even better. Uh, we came uh, out of $129 million. We overshot our projection by only $9,000. Um, so we know that projections are, they're only educated guesses. Um, but, you know, I, uh, I, it is my goal that we will always strive to be as accurate as possible in, in putting out any numbers so that, um, to instill confidence in the public so that they know that um, their tax dollars are well managed and, it, and are entrusted in good hands. Now, somewhat along those same lines, within the last few weeks, we received some good news regarding the SDA's credit rating. Uh, both S&P and uh, Fitch, within the last few weeks, have reaffirmed our AA plus credit rating. Uh, AA plus is the second highest rating, it, um, and it signifies that the SDA has a stable outlook and that we have strong financial backing and good reserves. Um, continuing along the lines of good stewardship, the Independent Taxpayer Oversight Committee has completed its first ever performance audit of the Measure A program. Uh, I, uh, ITOC Chair um, Joan Baruki will present the final report today in item five. Now, about a year and a half ago to two years ago, you'll recall that uh, th those of you who were on the board at the time, you'll recall that we did a series of transactions regarding our bond program. And it was right after that that I had promised the board that um, I would give you a break and not bring any bond-related activities to you. Um, but um, that break ends today. Um, the authority's financial advisor, uh, Peter Schellenberger of PFM, and, um, and our financial officer, Tim Jones, uh, they always monitor the market and um, look for opportunities to uh, enhance our program and to save money. And so they will be addressing your board today in item six. Finally, I wanted to provide you an update on uh, Senate Bill 1 and the $200 million a year local partnership program. Uh, last month, I reported that uh, 
state SB 277, which would increase how much the STA got every year to pass out to our member agencies. Um, it was overwhelmingly approved by the legislature and then forwarded to the governor. Now, um, as of today, as of 30 minutes ago, the governor has still not signed it. Um, and he and his last day to act on that is October 13th, which is only three days away. Now, um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and I hope you will too, that the governor will either sign it soon or not sign it at all, uh, which would allow for it to become um, automatically become law. Um, if, if that is the case, that would be a big win for everyone in Sacramento County. Uh, now, regardless of what happens with SB uh, 277, the local partnership program schedule has changed. Now, originally, your board was scheduled to um, decide on a package of projects this December and then prioritize another package of competitive projects in January. Now, CTC staff has indicated that they are, that they have pushed their, their schedule back by about three months. Now, the, uh, now the, the final due date uh, for, the, for all the uh, local partnership program applications is May 18th, which means that your board will have to um, start um, handling these projects in your, uh, at your April meeting and also your May 14th meeting um, under, uh, w under the guidance of your new executive director, Will Kempton. Um, and you'll notice that today's agenda is, is very light. Uh, in, in fact, in the two and a half years that I've been your executive director, this will be probably your shortest meeting. And so probably. now <laughs> now is as good a time as any to thank uh, your board for your patience um, it, with my long agendas. Um, but in, in the last two and a half years, I think we've covered a lot of ground. We've enacted a lot of new initiative and a lot of new programs. And I think we're, we're getting to the place, uh, getting to be at a really, really good place. So thank you for that. And that concludes the executive director's report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hom. Um, your next item is your consent items uh, three through four for approval. I move consent. Second. Any comments? Okay, please vote. Unanimous vote with those members present. Next item, please. Your next item is your Measure A Performance Audit Report. Good afternoon. My name is Joan Baruki. I'm your chair of the Independent Taxpayers Oversight Committee. Welcome, Joan. Good afternoon. So uh, I'm here on behalf of the ITALK Committee to present to you our uh, the first Measure A Performance Audit Report. I want to thank the ITALK committee, um, the STA staff, and our consultants for the effort over the last year that we've put into this report in developing both the objectives for this report as well as the report itself. The audit is concerned with the program, Measure A program's performance as well as the management of the program. Uh, both together from the time of its inception in April 2009 through June 30th, 2018. So it does not include the last fiscal year. The performance audit indicated a very good report, um, which I think you should all be uh, very proud of. And there were only two exceptions that I want to note that came through in the report. The first was on the uh, administrative cost and whether or not the program stayed within the administrative cost. If you look at the report in terms of 2016 and forward, the board and the staff have been doing very, very well with the administrative cost. Unfortunately, prior to 2016, because of the commingling of funds with old measure and new measure money, as well as programs being commingled in that account, there's not a clear picture on the administrative cost. The fortunate part, the good news is, staff caught that and corrected that issue in 2016. So from then forward, we do have a very clear picture of administrative cost. The other uh, item I want to 
highlight for you is the maintenance of effort objective. And we wanted to specifically look at that since it's uh, called out in the measure itself. To me, this is a very good news uh, item in the audit. What it shows, and again, we only did this based on a sampling of projects, but what it showed is that the dollars that STA has been um, handing out, allocating to jurisdiction, has been able to leverage a significant amount of state and federal funding. On average, the STA dollars are really only totaling about 35% of the project funding. So you're getting another 60 to 65% in other sources of funds for your projects in the region. And I think that's a very, very good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I'll ask you if you have any questions. Uh, are, th comments? are there any questions? Good report. Is anyone? A, a very good report, I, I think, and it's understandable what you, your comments about prior to 2016. We were happy to get that squared away. and. Uh, uh, generally a very good report so yeah. thank you and thank you for the committee for all you do I think everyone on the board is is very pleased with the work good. that uh, particularly since you got here uh, Joan. thank you thank you I see that is a receive and file so we'll move on to the next item your next item is your series. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to back up. Uh, Jeffrey Tardigia wanted to speak on this item, on item five. Jeff Tardigia. Um, the two questions going back to your oversight uh, committee would be simply is is in the you say percentage what was the dollar of that administrative cost in this two measurement of periods was there anything significantly changed and lastly in projecting for the future um, what should we say uh, um, dynamics or whatever you are seeking to measure to what you've seen in the past to what you want to look at in the future and the last piece would be is um, considering the possibility of recession is that change anything in assessment or of interest it's more than actually going to be to the next part of your bond measure but uh, but anyway that's what for the uh, oversight committee Thank Could you. I address those, please? Um, I believe the, uh, the the first part of the question was regarding the amounts. The amounts are actually listed in the performance audit. Um, now, what we've done uh, since it was right around, I, th I believe it was 2017, and, and what we've done with the administrative account is that it was it, it was previously held at the county, and it was a it was basically it was a paper account. And what we've, what we've done since then is that it is actually a physically separate account now in a different institution in which our fiduciary actually puts three quarters of 1% into that fund. And so uh, from this point forward, we cannot, we cannot spend more than, more than an allotment even if we wanted to. The, the money simply would not be there. So that is a control that we installed to ensure that, that, that there is nothing else that, that happens that there won't be future finding regarding that, that regard. Um, and then finally, regarding the recessions, um, we have engaged an economist um, that we work with every year to forecast our revenues. Um, the, the latest one does show that we will be, uh, it's, it's not, a, uh, not necessarily a recession, but there, there will be um, a projected uh, downturn in projected revenues over the next two years. And um, over the long term, um, they, they have also baked in a few other recessions as well. Uh, but we leave that up to the economists and the experts to, 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 to give us that information. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Hom? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next item. Your next item is your series 2014A, Bonds, Mode, Change, and Ancillary Services. In May of this year, your board directed staff and PFM financial advisors to proceed with a plan to reduce debt service costs by moving the series 2014A bonds directly purchased by Wells Fargo into the publicly traded market. This change is expected to save the authority about $235,000 per year 
under current market conditions or about 1.2 million over the next five years, which is the term of the liquidity facility. The cost to complete the transaction is about $330,000, which the authority will recover over an 18-month period uh, with the savings. The cost to complete the transaction will be paid for with pay-go cash, not financed. Sumitomo Mitsui uh, Banking Corporation will provide liquidity support, and Wells Fargo will provide remarketing agent services. Both firms <coughs> offered competitive terms for their respective services. The documents that are attached to this item need board approval so that the conversion can, uh, can be completed as planned on October 31st. To provide further context and answer questions, we have with us today Peter Schellenberger, Managing Director, PFM Financial Advisors. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, again, I'm Peter Schellenberger from PFM. Uh, I come from the land of shutoff power in Oakland. It's good to see that you have the lights on here. Yes. Um, you can spend the night if you like. I might have to. I might do some work here if you don't mind. Uh, uh, just a quick overview. It, uh, I'd put this in the category it of It just increases the sales tax <laughs> revenue if you spend the night. Exactly. Right. Um, uh, I would characterize this not as major surgery, but really sort of sort of targeted targeted um, uh, strategy to to achieve lower cost. And as Tim pointed out, that lower cost is expected to be in two hundred thirty five thousand dollar annual range. Uh, I'll give you a broad overview uh, for some context. The authority currently has about three hundred fifty six million dollars of bonds outstanding. Those bonds will uh, mature through twenty thirty nine. Um, uh, it's a fairly, uh, by most standards, a low leveraged program. And what I mean by that is your debt service on these bonds is $18 million annually for the next 10 years through 2028. When you compare that to last year's sales tax revenues of $131 million, you have about $7.30 seven, $7 for every dollar of debt service today coming in through sales tax. So we call that seven, over seven times coverage. Other agencies throughout the state, highly rated agencies, might have two, two and a half, three times coverage. So here you stand at seven, seven and a half times coverage without the expectation to issue additional debt. That in part supports the AA plus, the very high ratings that Norm rattled off. Uh, Tim and ourselves met with Fitch and S&P several weeks ago. Continue to make the push for a AAA upgrade. We think you're, as an, a as an authority, worthy of that, uh, well positioned for that AAA. Um, and we continue to make that case, and you're right on the cusp. But the only step from AA plus is AAA, so we continue to make that push. Uh, here, as Tim pointed out, it's, it's focused on the 2014 A bonds, which are currently a privately held loan by Wells Fargo. Uh, Post-tax reform, the cost of that loan went up about 22 basis points, or 0.22 percent. Um, that's meaningful on the 2014. That's 101. That's 106 million dollars. So the simple math is 22, uh, 0.22 percent times 106 million is about 235,000. Um, in in reality, I'm going to point this out, and it's in a memo I think that Tim has provided to you. That 22 basis points compares to two data points the Wells Fargo loan, and then if you were to trade equal to the following index, the Security Industries Financial Market Association Index, the SIFMA index. Let me tell you this, it's the short-term high, it's an index that reflects the cost of short-term high-grade weekly paper, which is what the 2014 A bonds are. It's a short-term index. So here's the takeaway. If, if we move from from the current Wells Fargo cost to the SIFMA index, it's a 22 basis point savings. That's what we're saying is going to generate the $235,000 cost savings. In reality, over the last year, the authorities' bonds, partly because of the strong rating, have been trading 15 basis points lower than the SIFMA index. So if we move from the Wells Fargo loan and trade where we expect you to trade, which is really 15 basis points below SIFMA, then the annual savings will be closer to 400000 we don't want to overstate that, so we're banking that you'll trade on the index, but his historically you're trading 15 basis points lower. So that's, I think there's some upside to this move, but conservatively, as Tim points out, over the next five years, about $1.2 million in cost savings. So that's the rationale and the justification, and in, in terms of uh, total cost to execute, it's about $330,000 for rating agencies and legal and financial and banking fees, which should be recouped in an 18-month period. So. Anyone have any questions about this transaction? I'll move the item. A motion is there second. A second. Second. Please vote. 
Helen O'Connell. Thank you, Peter. Unanimous vote with let it be known that. What? Miller has abstained. I was reading the votes. Go ahead, Helen. Good morning, board. My name is Helen O'Connell, and I am glad to see that you're um, saving the taxpayers money by diversifying and getting the best bang for your buck. Thank you for being conscientious and forthright and upfront with all your financial dealings. Thanks very much. Next item is uh, comments from authority board. Are there any comments? All good news. Okay. Yeah. Let's have more meetings like this. <laughs> and this one's adjourned. <laughs> like this.